Welcome to a new episode of Ausfa TV in English. We have been invited from BMW to the US to Spartanburg, close to Greenville in South Carolina, and right across the street is a big plant where they all manufacture the X models and here is the X it all started with, the BMW X5 from 1999. While the X5 is BMW's most popular SUV or how they say SAV for sport activity vehicle, they've made a couple of other cars. After the X5 we have got introduced to the X3 and then they came up with the first SAC Sport Activity Coupe and that was the BMW X6 introduced in 2008. And we are here for a reason of course because BMW in Paris just introduced us the new version of the X6 and here it is, all new, all sharpened, and we are here in Spartanburg to present you the all new BMW X6. When BMW introduced the X6 in 2008, the whole German press was like, what the f***? What are they doing? A coupe with a SUV mixed up? No one, no one will even buy this car. And they were right, at least for Germany. The car is not very popular in Germany. But talking about North America, China and Russia, they love this baby. And it was sold in the past years over 260,000 times. So that's what I call a success for a niche car and you know Mercedes is about to present a similar car a SUV with a coupe style so BMW does a lot right I might say so Russia America, China, what do they want? A V8. And that's what we're presenting you today. The BMW X-Drive 50i that has a 4.4 liter V8 inside. When I hear V8, I'm thinking about a beautiful engine sculpture, you know? And what all I see here is a lot of plastic, but hopefully below the plastic there is this beautiful sculpture. However, this beast is good for 450 horses. And whenever you give them fire, uh, the maximum torque is 650 Newton meters. The top speed is limited at 250 kilometers per hour, which equals 155 miles per hour. And you reach the 100 kilometer per hour marker or 62 miles per hour marker in just 4.8 seconds. Let me point out some of the changes to the predecessor. We have still the double kidney grill, but the bars inside the grill, they are wider apart now, which should give the car a more masculine, a more aggressive look, of course. Everything's more aggressive. However, what I personally like about the X6, the new one, is the smiling mouse down here. Even if it's supposed to look aggressive and all mean and all that, to me, it smiles happy face and I like it. The headlights are now ending directly at the grill so we don't have any paint job up here anymore. They are wider and as an option you get them as full LED. And one, two, three, so the triple I, the typical BMW triple I, you can see here as well. And the whole bumper is shaped in a slightly different way. Well, I might say that the BMW X6 is sort of pure extravagance, but it is actually the name of the style package that our car has. So you have the side bars right here, you have mirror caps in alloy, brushed alloy look, and you have something which is new with the current version. You have 
air outlets right here and this is a chrome or alloy application on the outlet so it comes out a little bit more and the normal was well, the normal the normal x6 stands on 19 inch alloy wheels and as you might be able to see here we have this special version on 20 inch uh, besides that the main difference and we already know it from the bmw x4 and you might have seen our video about the x4 the main difference in the side view is the difference on the shadow line right here while well, the previous models shadow line went from the front to the back the new version has a cut right here at the grip for the rear door. It cuts the line into two ones, but two, uh, or rather a second line starts here. And this gives the car a more aggressive look at the back. And it's sort of the beginning from what I will tell you from the back. This line goes up here and ends in the back taillights well i'm 180 centimeters tall so i'm not a small guy actually but i feel kind of small standing next to this beast the roof is 170 centimeters high and of course it's the sac the sport activity coupe so we have this sloping roof line my favorite side of the new BMW X6 is the back. I really like it and to me it looks like a pit bull ready to jump. Well, however, you have uh, this line and sort of a big spoiler that holds the greenhouse like on its shoulders and I really like it and I told you we have this new line that ends up in the tail lights and gives the back a more wider look at least for me by the way the rear lights the tail lights the rear lights the tail lights however they split it into two parts because one part goes up with the hood and for the first time they have full LED techniques inside so um, most probably you see the car from the back anyway and typical BMW they are shaped in an L form special for this version for the xDrive 50i as well for the xDrive 40d the diesel version so the two most powerful versions are the tailpipes they are shaped in a way that i cannot pronounce rhombus like or rhomboids or whatever so this is special for the powerful engines while the smaller engines have just you know normal round tailpipes besides that we have uh, in the rear bumper this alloy uh, kind of style part which gives the car a neat look as well. I really like the back. I'm not getting tired of repeating it. I like the back. I really do. All right. I can't wait to get inside because I already smell the leather and I'm excited to present it to you. So let's hop inside. Whoa. Jesus. Wow. Um, and I'm saying really wow for a reason because I like the interior very much. It is because I like the brown and the black leather that come together here. Um, it just looks awesome and it feels awesome. The leather is really soft. You know, there's a bunch of cars out there that have leather on the seats that is okay, but whenever you find it somewhere else, it's kind of really hard leather. This one is soft and you want to oil it or rub some, some grease on it to make it even a little bit more soft. It's, it's just, it's nice to touch everywhere. I like it, you know, I really like it. First impression when I get into the car, except of this ah, great smelling new leather, it's high quality, it's premium, I see it, I feel it and I smell it. You have all the leather. Okay, I stop with leather now. I have a nice wood application here. I've brushed, brushed alloy every now and then to give me a, just 
you know, metal touch and uh, everything feels wide and spacious. Um, except when I look out on the front, um, I have an elevated sitting position here. I can see the hood with uh, two uh, lines. So it, it feels nice, but with the whole dashboard that comes up here so much and we have this coop style, there's not too much space to look outside. So that's not really spacious on this side. Once I put my eyes on the other side, I have this long dashboard and this wide middle part. So it feels I really need a walkie talkie to talk to my passenger, you know? It's really, I have a good spacious feeling, but it's not in the front here. I can't really describe what I mean. Um, besides, I'm sitting in really fine, I'm trying to avoid leather, but in really fine seats. They are highly comfortable. Uh, they give me a little side support up here on the backrest as well as on the cushion. It's not too much, but overall this is not a sports car, it's a sports activity coupe. So that's just, just okay. I don't like the steering wheel. It's uh, coated with leather it feels it's a soft leather as well but it's you know I, it's a little bit too thick for me I don't know maybe it's not maybe it's a leather I can't re really tell what it is I just don't like it too much I would appreciate at least where I put my hands some Alcantara which I appreciate just more I, I like it a little bit more uh, besides that um, I like the digital gauges. We are here in Spartanburg, USA, in South Carolina, so it's showing miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour. Uh, so the speedometer goes up to 160 miles per hour, while the RPM meter gives me 7,000 um, RPMs and on the sides, on the left side, a little gauche, uh, digital gauche for the uh, fuel and on the right side for the engine temperature, the oil temperature. Um, in the middle I have this wide, very, very wide display of the infotainment system that I personally like a lot. I don't even need them so high or so big but you know, this white thing, especially in BMW where, the, uh, where you can split the screen or have a split screen function, uh, that's something I like, I appreciate and it's really sharp and easy to read and uh, yeah. Besides that we have in the X6 the head up display with gives you good information. It's presented in a very sharp and by the way colored way and it's right there where I want it. It gives me all the information that I need and I like it. I personally would not buy a car for myself without a head-up display. I enjoy them very very much. Looking in the mirrors and in the, in the side mirrors I see everything I need. The mirrors are big enough at least in proportion to the car. When I look in the rear mirror inside, that's something completely different because uh, due to the shape of the car, uh, the back window, what I can see through is very small and since the window ends in a very high position, I can't really see what's below the thing. Lucky for every uh, X6 buyer, you can choose as an option a rear camera or even a 360 degree camera which helps you a lot with the parking and you can really park the car very detailed which is probably just important for Germany where everything's so tight and narrow. Here in the States you don't even need this camera because the, the X6 in America is just a compact sized car I guess. Anyhow, um, what else is there to say? I would like to show you around just quickly what kind of uh, compartments I have to store everything. In the door panels I have a little compartment for bottles. Uh, this is a 20 ounce, whatever, 
around 600 milliliters bottle and I think you can store up to a 1.5 liter bottle in the door panel. Uh, next to this uh, is another compartment which is really huge so you can store a bunch of stuff in there, maps, uh, books, uh, whatever. Uh, lots of space. Next to the steering wheel there's a little compartment that is pretty useless if you ask me because there's not really space in there, still it's there. Right here we have we have two cup holders. The bottle fits in here with ease and I think you can put much bigger bottles in here. I see at least one liter bottles and you have this little finger things here that grabs the bottle so it's not shaking too much and it allows even smaller bottles to be placed in here. In front of there is um, a little compartment where there used to be an ashtray you know and a 12 volt outlet and if you like your car to be tightened up you can close the thing and it looks sweet and nice. Right here is a tiny compartment big enough for the key. By the way let me show you. That's the key. I think it's kind of sexy. You agree? Key sexy? Yes? No? Please in the comments. And this compartment is big enough just for the key. Here we have something just usability. I don't know. Is it cool that just one of the thing opens whenever you press it? Or would you rather have both open? Anyhow, we have a bigger compartment here. For us they put an iPhone uh, thing in here, an iPhone holder. We have another 12 outlet, outlet uh, plug, uh, no, an outlet for USB where you can plug in your iPhone or whatever and an aux in and some space. And they you have a surface in here so nothing is scooting around too much. We have of course uh, sun shields. In the sun shields we have makeup mirrors on both sides that are illuminated and here even a little clip for tickets. Um, we have a little compartment for sunglasses so I could put my Ray-Ban right in here but I think my Ray-Ban is just a tiny bit too big for this compartment. No. No, now I don't want to break my glasses, so this could be a little bit bigger BMW, please. We have reading lights for the driver and the passenger and a big light to illuminate the whole thing. Talking about illuminate, we have a beautiful ambient light that comes in orange, blue or white. We have a stripe that is on the dashboard right here, which goes over to the door panels. A bright spray, uh, a bright light and we have uh, the door panels illuminated as well as the floor. Um, you can mix up the colors as well so that is pretty neat. And I think that's about it. Let me just point out we have a Bang & Olufsen sound system in here which sounds pretty awesome. And I like the center speaker that comes out whenever you turn on or off the car. Well, it comes out when you turn on the car and goes down again if you would turn it off. So I think the whole interior in the front is pretty amazing. Let me hop in the back and show you the rest. One, two, three. We are talking about SAC. So we have lots of space in the front. Do we have space in the back? Let me check and come on with me inside. Okay, I have to nod my head to get inside. That's how I would design the back of a premium car. Leather as well everywhere. Smells good too. Touches very well too. And this is just the back. Awesome, I like it. Um, let me see. We have next to the leather this wood application here as well. Uh, the handle is made out of brushed alloy so we have the same material mix like in the front. I'm sitting here quite well. Uh, the seats are not formed out too much but still a little bit. You have a well a taste I would say a taste of side support. Um, anyhow 
it is okay. No, I like it. I, I'm sitting very well. I have enough leg room as well. And surprisingly, uh, we have, you know, sloping roof line. I have enough head space as well. Uh, I want to add that I'm 180 centimeters, so 5'11 tall. The driver's seat is put in my position and I'm sitting here quite well. I have enough room and I'm sitting quite comfortable. Um, this car is pretty much fully loaded, I think. I have a climate control for the rear and um, I have even heated seats in the rear on both sides. I have uh, two 12 volt outlets down here. I have um, a sort of cup holder right here in the door panel right after this. A bigger storage compartment and it has a surface that stuff is not going around. Right next to the seat is another uh, tiny compartment. I think it's pretty useless but I want to mention it at least. Um, I have this magazine holder whatever on the back and what you see here looks pointless not even stylish but it's made because uh, we have an LED band right there so I think it gives you a taste of ambient light in the rear as well. Um, I have reading lights in the rear as well and a big entry light. We have little hooks here to hang up your jacket or whatever. By the way we have no uh, grips or handles in the whole car, not in the front, not in the back, so it's probably coupe style, I guess. I like handles because I'm, you know, the one who's sitting here while other guys are driving like, ooh, no, no. So I'm missing the handle. Uh, if we're talking about a kid or children friendly car, let's check out the belts, safety belts. They are pretty long long enough to buckle up a child seat or a baby thing. Uh, we have this uh, locks for the belts that are really uh, tightened in here so kids can buckle up easily and on both sides we have Isofix uh, holders. When I scoot in the middle I'm sitting a little bit higher, not as much comfortable as on the other two places, but still, even for me as an old, bigger guy, I have enough space to drive at least, I don't know, a, a trip for 60 or 70 miles this way without getting seriously harmed or damaged. Um, so there's enough space for two grown-ups or two kids with a child seat. And you have, you know, whenever your mother-in-law comes by, you can put her on this seat for a short ride at least. First of all, I mean, the X6 is pretty nice to go to Aspen, go skiing of course, so you can flip over the whole thing. It's divided 40, 20, 40, and the 20 part is to put in your ski or other longer luggage. And that's not it. Of course, I have an armrest. That's the way I want to travel, you know like a chef and right here we have two cup holders the bottle fits in here pretty well and even smaller cans or bottles fit in here and they hold it with this little rubber things behind this is a little compartment for whatever that is not too big yeah no i like it Besides that, in the German reviews we always pointed out, and the English I haven't done so, um, protection for your kids so they don't, you know, get their arms stuck while you on the front uh, close the window. So when you hold up your arm, the window goes down automatically, and that's a good thing for sure. And I like to point out the windows fully fold down in the door panel so you can lean out with your whole arm. By the way, those are other journalists driving to the test field here and have a little off-road fun with the X6. We denied it to bring you this clip here. Now have a look at the trunk. Did you guys see our BMW X4 review? Pretty much the same except the car was smaller. And the X4 had this function that you could kick, kick, 
kick under the car and the trunk would open. Well, I did this here and I was thinking, damn, I'm too stupid. But now I found out it doesn't have the feature. You can order it as an option, but it's not included in our test car. Lucky me, I can spare this out. Once you open the door, you see I'm 5'11", my beautiful maid Sarah, she has tiny heels on, she's today 6'1", 6'2", and she can even stand here without banging her head, so um, that's enough space here. Once you want to pack your car, demonstration, uh, you probably have a servant, oops, no, a butler of course, uh, who's putting all your stuff in here for your weekend trip and this poor guy has to lift around 83 centimeters to put it inside the trunk. And you can pack up to 580 liters in the trunk as it is and once you flip the back seats, you can even use 1525 liters of storage. I unpacked the trunk just to show you this little feature here. A lifter puts up the floor of the trunk and here you have a special, a tiny secret storage as well. Maybe a Yata fits in here, I kind of doubt it. Still there's enough space to put some other luggage in. Besides that we have some nets, some, uh, well at least one 12 volt outlet and some hooks. And now I will flip the back seats to give you all the numbers about the inside. Flipping the back seats is nothing for tiny people because at least if you want to do it from the trunk you better open the doors and do it this way. Okay, I promised you to give you some numbers. The depth of the trunk is when you haven't flipped the back seats around one meter. The wide it's around 113 centimeters wide. Once you flip the back seats till the end of the backrest, of the flip backrest, you have 163 centimeters. And if you put the passenger seat to the very front, you can even put stuff in here up to 2 meters. So that's quite a lot, I might say. And as you can see, we don't have a plane surface here. Not even if you put all the weight on here, so you have a little bumper right here. Not really plain to bad. You can put up to 700 kilograms extra in the car, load it up with 700 kilograms of whatever. And if that's not enough for you, the X6 is allowed to pull trailers up to a load of uh, 2.7 tons if they have their own brakes, otherwise just 700, 750 kilograms. And here comes the fun part, especially for me as a German here in America with a speed limit of 80 miles per hour. Having a beast and monster with a V8 and 450 horsepower. Yeehaw, nut! Let's start the engine. Put a camera in front of me and I will tell you something about braking, steering, suspension and so on. Let's go! Okay, first of all, I'm driving in the US. Even I've been in the US quite a few times and I've driven quite a few miles inside the US. It's still hard for me to compare a car that I only drive in the US to any other car, especially with the X6 and its big dimensions. Here in the US it almost looks like a compact car, while I know back in Germany it's a huge car. Here we have wide street, big 
parking spaces in uh, Germany it's all tightened up so for me it's kind of hard to compare especially here with the speed limit and all the straight roads you hardly find any curves where you can really test out what the X6 is uh, made for or what you can accomplish with the X6 in addition to this we didn't have too much time really driving you know our format it's more showing the car and a little bit of driving experience and so uh, the time was really tight our time schedule here so I didn't have a chance to drive too much I would like to tell you some stuff anyway since I had at least a little opportunity to drive so uh, first of all we have still like in any other BMW the Feierlebnis Schalter so the switch for you know choosing different driving modes and we do have four driving modes it's the Eco Pro mode with what I really like you know for efficient driving um, we have the comfort mode for just you know normal driving and cruising we have sport and sport plus so in Comfort or in Eco Pro, you hardly hear the V8. You know, you hardly have this bubbling noise that you like so much. Uh, but once you put the car in Sport or Sport Plus and you, you know, put your foot on the throttle and really let it go, it is hearable, but it's not too impressive, at least for me. So it's not a sporty sound inside the car which you might like you know from um, a GL63 AMG or the M4 M whatever you know and this is not an M version just keep it in mind it's just a regular X6 with a V8 engine um, so acceleration is no problem at all I mean we have 400 450 horses running for us so you step on the throttle and they run baby run that's quite fun and when you're driving in sport <clears throat> plus it's even more fun acceleration is just fun makes you know it's a huge car and still it's going wham that's good <clears throat> the steering I was pretty impressed it's a huge car it's a kind of heavy car and um, still the steering wheel whatever I do with the steering wheel the car follows my direction uh, other people call it direct steering I say it giving me a good feedback and it's quite easy to drive actually but you know I'm here in the US uh, the suspension is even comfort a little bit too stiff for me really I mean it's not bad it's not you know hard power you know in sport plus it really gets stiff in comfort it is still a little bit too stiff to be called comfort comfortable yeah I think I can say this this way uh, talking about mileage I have no idea I've just driven up and down the road a couple of times I acceler accelerated a little bit so it's not really whatever I did here with my gas mileage it's just nonsense it's not a value I want to tell you we have brakes here and when I put my foot on the pedal the car slows down in a way that is acceptable I didn't have any situation where I had to do an emergency brake and I don't even want to do this now uh, it feels all right for the SUV or SAV or SAC segment so I have nothing to complain about this what I want to mention real quick is that I like uh, once you turn the different driving modes like you switch between Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport Sport Plus that the uh, digital dashboard has other look and feels well looks at least uh, so once you drive it in Sport Plus it gets all red you know and like yeah RPM 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 and uh, then when you put it in Eco Pro, it get blue like you know hey save some fuel save mother earth everything's cool um, that's kind of neat and overall I like the whole dashboard thing I think it's a nice ambient and it's just feels good we have several assist systems 
I didn't really have too much time to uh, check them out. I can say that the traffic sign recognition works even in the US pretty well, so it's giving me all the speed limits here. And um, we have a blind spot warner, I can tell you. Besides that, I don't know, I didn't try out too much stuff. Didn't have time, sorry. Uh, one word to the Bang & Olufsen sound system that is uh, in here. Again, I didn't have too much time, but the first sound check was pretty awesome. It's okay, it's a good, no, it's awesome. You can buy it, it's a good system. And I like how the tweeter in the front goes up and down once you turn on or off the car. One word to the elevated sitting position. I kind of like it. I really like how you see the part of the hood while you're driving. And um, you have this SUV, SAV, whatever, SAC style. So you see, you sit a little bit higher, you see a little bit more. That's good. But I really like that you see parts of the hood because the hood looks kind of sexy from above here. I've talked to the BMW guys here at the press driving event and asking for an M version and they were like all playing innocent. An M version? Ooh, no, we haven't heard about such a thing. So that probably means it's coming soon. I guess so. If not soon, then later. And I'm really curious how this drives because from the acceleration, from the speed feeling, it is a sportive car here. We had a chance to go on the test track here in uh, Spartanburg. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the time, but we could at least see the guys speeding and going fast into the curves. They even have had a circle where you could drift. And uh, that all looked pretty awesome. And so I think there's so much more fun you can have with this car that I had just driving up and down the straight streets here in the US. So how much? What's your last price? How much? You want it, you get some, huh? No, seriously, this car starts at 82,500 euros. I estimate this very test car to cost around 120,000 euros. Just an estimate. So, um, if you want your price, I'm talking about German prices, of course. Ask your local dealer, ask the dealer at your market because prices might vary. Most likely in America, the cars are much cheaper than in Germany. So, woo, I want to do this. I hope you like this little review about the BMW X6 from Spartanburg here in South Carolina in the US. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, just shut the fuck up. And no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it. it I, I would just put a beep on it. I didn't say it. Uh, so if you liked it, give me a thumb up. If you have any questions about our test ride, use the fields in the comments and we'll try to answer you. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. So you think I'm ugly and my English sucks? Well, feel free to tune in at Fastlane Daily and watch our beautiful colleague Sarah to do the review there. Or even better, check out our German review because there we speak German without any accent. Thank you and goodbye. Uh, warte noch mal, Jens. My fa <coughs> my <coughs> my favorite side. So. Uh, let me get the junk out of the car and flip the back seat. The X to the C for FLD. X to the Z. The X to the Z for FLD. My name is Sarah Sauer. And we're here for you to see. The all new BMW X6.